only five years into the 21st century, and already a gutsy year in film. That the best you can do, you pansies. With two comic book franchises having important reboots, and indie film getting more notice from audiences. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies of 2005. For this list, we've looked at the lasting cult status of some of the biggest hits of the year in question, as well as the films that were loved by critics and audiences. Let's do our first show about the downfall of television. Some hold up nicely over time, others maybe not so much. Either way, sit back and enjoy this blast from the past. However, we aren't including documentaries, so Murderball will have to take a backseat on this one. We're not going just for this feel-good, please pat me on the back, thank you. Thank you for participating. Yeah. No, no, no. And even though Old Boy debuted at Sundance and had an American limited release in 2005, we're excluding it from the list because it initially came out in its home country of South Korea in 2003. <laughs> Number 10, Walk the Line. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. A decent biopic about the man in black was long overdue, and this drama was more than just decent. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Featuring Joaquin Phoenix as Johnny Cash and Reese Witherspoon as his second wife, June Carter, the James Mangold-directed flick followed the country star as he rose to fame and his relationship with the singer. With incredible acting and singing performances, Walk the Line won Witherspoon a Best Actress Oscar, and earned four other Academy Award nods, along with multiple other accolades and critics' praise. Right. Number 9. The Squid and the Whale Up next, Walt Berkman, who is going to play us a song. 2005 was a great year for independent films, and our next entry marked director-writer Noah Baumbach's first widely received success. Mom says we should tell people. Yeah, Mom doesn't have to go to school. Stop crying. Based on Baumbach's childhood experiences, the art house comedy drama recounts the story of two brothers and how they coped with their parents' divorce in the 1980s. So, Dad, what will happen with the cat? We'll figure something out. The film was produced by the director's longtime pal Wes Anderson, and was a hit at the Sundance Film Festival. How do you know they were both Franks? Well, I suppose it's possible other kids are masturbating and spreading their semen around the school as well. It went on to earn six Independent Spirit Award nominations and was even nominated for a Best Original Screenplay Oscar. So how will you split evenly with seven days? Oh, I've got you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and every other Thursday. Every other? That's how we each have you equally. That was your father's idea. Number 8, Capote. Truman Capote. Dorothy Sanderson. Our next entry proved that Philip Seymour Hoffman was one of the finest actors of his generation. I'm writing a book. It, it's too much for a single article. Playing the highly prolific Truman Capote, Hoffman completely disappeared in the role of the writer. Thank you very much. Although the film only focuses on the chapter of his life during which he wrote what's often considered the first non-fiction novel in Cold Blood, the actor obsessed himself with researching Capote's life, especially his childhood, in order to render his performance a convincing one. I think you like it. It's very masculine. It's in cold blood. The biographical motion picture also marked director Bennett Miller's Hollywood debut. It was nominated for five Academy Awards, but was only awarded one. Best Actor for Hoffman's Riveting Turn. This is the book I was always meant to write. Number 7, Sin City. Enjoy the show. Based on the graphic novel by Frank Miller, our next entry was praised as both a critical and a commercial success. You really are pushing your luck, Padre, feeding me garbage like that. The neo-noir crime thriller is based on the first, third, and fourth book from the series and tells three different stories about revenge, lust, and survival. Oh, sugar. You just gone and done the dumbest thing in your whole life. With a stellar cast including Bruce Willis, Jessica Alba, Clive Owen, and Mickey Rourke, Sin City stood out for its distinctive color processing and actually won the technical grand prize at the Cannes Film Festival. What have you done? Exactly what I had to. Every step of the way. Number six, Batman Begins. I'm Batman. 
With the Dark Knight trilogy, Christopher Nolan was able to single-handedly redefine the superhero movie. I will go back to Gotham and I will fight men like this, but I will not become an executioner. After years of unsuccessful and shallow attempts at a reboot of the Batman series, Nolan stepped in to give it a darker, more dramatic tone. Do I look like a cop? Christian Bale put on the black cape and immediately gave the character a more serious and realistic feel. The film attracted wider audiences because people who dismissed the superhero genre were now willing to give it a try. Amusing, but pointless. It also received recognition for its stunning visuals. Wally Pfister was nominated for a Best Cinematography Oscar. He thinks you're dangerous. What do you think? I think you're trying to help. Number five. The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Are you a virgin? <laughs> Are you a virgin? Yeah, yeah not, not since I was 10. It all makes sense! You're a virgin! Despite its crude title, our next entry is a sweet and smart comedy that redefined the genre. It tells the story of, you guessed it, a 40-year-old electronic store salesman who still hasn't slept with a woman because of various obstacles that always stood in his way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm your nose is bleeding. You think? Shy and socially awkward, he tries to blend in with his male colleagues, but they quickly catch on to his secret and decide to help him out. Wow, this is graphic. The film helped put comedian Steve Carell on the map, and the role remains one of his most memorable performances to date. And love will stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Number four, Good Night and Good Luck. Good Night and Good Luck. This stylish drama was directed by George Clooney and recounts the conflict between broadcast journalist Edward R. Murrow and U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy. And I want to assure you that I will not be deterred by the attacks of the Murrows, the Lattimores, the Fosters, the Daily Worker, or the Communist Party itself. Although steeped in American political history, it is the understory about Murrow and his dedicated staff that carries the film. Don, have you seen any spy films? You don't just hand me a classified folder, you're supposed to slip it in my briefcase. The black and white procedural flick is considered one of the best movies about journalism ever made. And it made audiences and critics consider Clooney's gift as a director. You know what occurs to me, we might not get away with this one. Good Night and Good Luck was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Director for Clooney and Best Actor for David Strathern as Murrow. We shall hope to deal with matters of more vital interest to the country next week. Good night and good luck. Number three, Brokeback Mountain. Jack Twist. Amos. Your folks should stop at Ennis. Delmar. When the next movie on our list hit theaters, it was all people could talk about. Although it was far from being the first film focusing on gay themes, it was definitely the first gay love story with big production values, starring two of Hollywood's most promising young actors, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. But you didn't want it, Ennis! So what we got now is Brokeback Mountain! Everything's built on that! That's all we got, boy! Telling the story of two cowboys who fall in love while herding sheep in the Wyoming mountains, the epic romantic drama covers their complex relationship from 1963 to 1983. Four years. Damn. <laughs> yeah, four years. It was the movie with the most Academy Award nominations that year, winning three for Best Original Score, Adapted Screenplay, and Director. I wish I knew how to quit you. Number two, Munich. There's people. They're sworn to destroy it. Forget peace for now. We have to show them we're strong. This next historical drama was based on the real events of the 1972 Summer Olympic Games, at which 11 Israeli team members were taken hostage and killed by the Palestinian group Black September. We have 11 Palestinian names. Each had a hand in planning in Munich. You're going to kill 11 men one by one. The political thriller recounts the story of Operation Wrath of God, the Israeli counter-terrorism team of assassins sent to retaliate. Do you know why we're here? Because 
خلينا نحكي شو شو. You fall so easy. He said yes already. He already said yes. The film was one of Steven Spielberg's biggest critical successes, while simultaneously being one of his lowest-grossing pictures ever. It inevitably sparked controversy for its themes, but what great movie doesn't? We're Jews, Evan. Jews don't do wrong because our enemies do wrong. Can't afford to be that decent anymore. I don't know that we ever were that decent. Suffering thousands of years of hatred doesn't make you decent. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What are you going to name it? Junebug. I mean, his real name will be Johnny, but we'll call him Junebug. No, I live with my mom. Oh. Yeah. You hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? No, no. Number one, a history of violence. <gasps> Jesus, Joey. <laughs> this crime thriller first caused waves at the Cannes Film Festival, where it was in the main competition for the Palme d'Or. Why don't you ask Tom about his older brother, Richie? Just... Ask Tom about how we try to rip my eye out with barbed wire. Directed by David Cronenberg, the film is based on a graphic novel of the same name and tells the story of a disgruntled diner owner who murders two men who try to rob him. <laughs> Viggo Mortensen called it the best movie he's ever been in, and critics praised Cronenberg for his straightforward depiction of the violent nature of humans. <laughs> Meanwhile, A History of Violence was also nominated for two Oscars and earned a number of other accolades as well. I should have killed you, Mac and Felly. Yeah, Joey. You should have. Do you agree with our list? It's a, it's, it's a personal choice, and, and I don't think it's weird at all. What's your favorite movie from 2005? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And take away his weapon. Both of them.